everybody here okay? Yes. Yeah, you can hear me back? Okay. Good. It was very good to be here with you again. Uh, I first started coming to Malaysia, it must have been in 1988. Yeah, were any of you attending the teachings back then? We did a retreat in, at Genting Highlands and, uh, you know, some different things. So some of you may have been there. And then throughout the years when I visited Singapore, often I've come to Malaysia and given Dharma talks too. So it's uh, very nice to, you know, keep that connection with you over the years. And also to watch how um, BGF has grown and developed over the years too. And uh, we were, several of us were at a conference last, no, yeah, it was last December, wasn't it, in India, uh, you know, an international Buddhist conference. And so I met several of the people from, from BGF there. And you were building your new building, and at the Abbey, we're building a new building too. So we were kind of commiserating about uh, you know, what it's like to build something. So I was hoping to see your new building when I came this time, but I heard that there's been some, you know, holdups. So I think that uh, today doing, you know, focusing on Tara is a, will be a very good way to clear some of, uh, you know, those obstacles. Because Tara is a female manifestation of the Buddha. Um, and especially uh, of the Buddha's enlightening activities. And they say that she um, especially brings a quick success. So maybe we can um, dedicate today, you know, not only for the successful Dharma practice and happiness of all sentient beings, but especially for the success in, in building your new uh, premise and having everything come out okay, including a higher roof, right? Yeah, which will be very nice. Okay, um, I wanted to, just before we uh, begin, we have a little tradition in the Tibetan tradition of making an offering to the uh, shrine. So I wanted to do this. This is a scarf with the different auspicious symbols that came from uh, ancient India, so I wanted to offer that. And then also some candles that we can uh, offer light to the Buddha. Um, light offering represents or is a cause to gain wisdom, you know, like the, the light of uh, the light of wisdom eliminating the darkness of ignorance. So let me do that now. Also good at you did your puja beforehand. I would like uh, to add to what you did and have us do uh, on your sheet the uh, two verses beforehand. The, the first one is refuge and bodhicitta. We gain refuge in the three jewels, and then also generating the loving compassionate aspiration to attain full awakening. 
And then the uh, four immeasurables, reciting those and contemplating those. Um, you know, that's a practice that's common to all the Buddhist traditions and is quite useful and quite beneficial. Sometimes, uh, you know, people come up to me and they say, oh, can you bless me or give me some holy water or something like that? And, and I say, oh, you know, it's like, okay, they, gotta, they want something. I better give them some, you know, some physical substance. Like, this water is going to liberate you. Um, <laughs> You know, come on. Uh, but I say, okay, when you take this, you also have to recite the, the four immeasurables. Yeah? So I kind of give that as a, like a tax that they have to pay if they're, if they're going to get some holy substance. You know, because it's really um, reciting and contemplating the four immeasurables that is going to free our mind. Some external substance is not going to give us realizations. Yeah, it's the transformation of our mind. And so, uh, you know, reciting the different words spoken by the Buddha, spoken by the sages of the past, uh, and not just reciting them like a parrot, a parrot, blah, 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 but really contemplating the meaning of when we say them, that, that's very transformative. So especially when we're doing the, reciting the four immeasurables, you know, we say, may all sentient beings have happiness in its causes. You know, it doesn't say, may everybody I like have happiness in its causes, and may everybody I don't like have suffering in its causes. <laughs> okay, it says, may all sentient beings have happiness in its causes. So that's a cause, that's a, a challenge for us to purify our mind and get rid of the mind that is prejudice, the mind that holds grudges, the mind that doesn't like people and wants revenge and wishes them ill. Yeah? Because sometimes we have that mind, don't we? Yeah? Somebody does something you don't like or interferes with your happiness and then and you say, may they get hit by a truck, <laughs> you know? And then the next thing you say is, may all sentient beings have happiness and cousin. <laughs> you know, well, those two thoughts don't go together, yeah? So we can't just say the four immeasurables, blah, blah. You know, we have to really, you know, feel them in our hearts. And if we're holding a grudge against somebody and wishing somebody ill, we need to stop, you know, and look in our mind and say, well, what's going on here? Yeah? Why, why is my heart so closed towards this sentient being? And then maybe we say, well, they hurt my feelings. You know, they got in the way of my happiness. And then to say, well, yes, they did, but isn't that a result of my own negative karma? <laughs> do I really believe in karma? Do I really believe that when I suffer it's because of the negative actions I've done in the past and when I have happiness it's because of my own positive actions? Do I really believe that or do I just say it? Okay? So to, to really check. Because the whole idea of karma is cause and effect. You know, our actions produce effects. And the effects don't necessarily come immediately. They could come a long time in the future. Okay. So if you know, I, I, this person did something that I don't like, it's a result actually of my own negative karma. There's no reason to be mad at them. If I don't like experiencing unpleasant experiences, then I should stop creating the cause for them by doing harmful actions. So instead of getting angry at this person and wishing them well, wishing them ill, I need to st 
you know, keep my precepts better and stop harming others. Mm -hmm. Then I won't have the suffering, and then I also won't have such bad feelings for other sentient beings. Making some sense to you? So this is something to really practice and think about, make specific examples in our life. Yeah, this isn't just theory. The Buddha really taught something for us to put in practice with, with you know, actual people that are in our life. Yeah. And in addition, if other people have done things that harmed us, isn't it because they've been miserable? Yeah, that they've been unhappy and they thought doing whatever they did that winds up harming us is going to make them happy. So it's a manifestation of their ignorance and their confusion and their own internal pain. So rather than hate somebody like this, can we forgive them? Can we have an attitude of kindness and compassion towards them? So that when we say, may all sentient beings have happiness in its causes, may all sentient beings be free of suffering in its causes, that we actually mean it. Yeah? Okay, that we actually transform our mind because it's that transformation of what's going on in here that's the actual practice. Okay, so when we recite the verses here, now try and think about the meaning. And uh, we'll have a little bit of silence after we finish reciting these two things. So during that silence, you can either wash, watch your breath, or maybe you can think a little bit about what I just said and see if you can develop an, uh, at least a neutral attitude, uh, if not an attitude of compassion towards the people who have harmed you, so that you can really say from your heart, may all sentient beings have happiness in its causes. May they all be free of suffering in its causes. Okay? Okay, so there's a little melody that uh, goes with the refuge in Bodhicitta. You can join us. I take refuge until I am awakened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the merit I create by engaging in generosity and the other far-reaching practices May I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I have awakened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the merit I create by engaging in generosity and the other far-reaching practices, May I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I have awakened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the merit I create by engaging in generosity and the other far-reaching practices, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and its causes. May all sentient beings not be separated from sorrowless bliss. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free of bias, attachment, and anger. So let's have a few minutes of silent meditation.